tell you this. I cried every day for two years straight. Good morning, everybody. Uh, right now, my mom and I are on our way to go get some hay for the donkeys. Um, and later on today, I have that huge, huge, huge anatomy exam, uh, which I feel very prepared for. But task at hand, getting some hay for the donkeys. And uh, mom and I are going to have a little chat about my coming out story. So here we go. Success, got all the hay loaded, and now Mama and I, we're gonna have a little chat. We thought it'd be cool if we did it in the car. Um, apologize if it's too loud or anything. But, so Mom, I posted a uh, coming out video to YouTube and some people commented, uh, wanting to hear your perspective of it. Okay. And, without further ado, what do you think about it? What do I think about the day that you came out to me? Is I guess the trail? day, the whole experience, your perspective, just anything you can offer. Well, I remember the day very well. When Jonathan came out, I was up in bed reading a book, watching TV at the same time. He came into me with several questions. You were in and out of the bedroom asking me questions, and I knew something was up, something was on your mind, but I didn't know what. And. Uh, then I remember coming into your bedroom, you asked me to come in, and I knew you were very upset. And you covered your eyes so that you couldn't see me, and you started to cry. And you said, I have to tell you something. And I said, well, tell me. And, and I was very sympathetic. And when you said, I'm gay, or I think I said, maybe you thought you were gay, but, but no, I no. Now that I think about it, you said you were gay. And to be honest about it, at that particular moment, my heart dropped into my stomach. And I didn't know what to say. I just knew my baby was hurting and you were crying and I held you and I said, it's okay, Jonathan, everything will be okay. Um, and I hugged you and then I wanted to know who, I wanted to know who you were with, or you had a, a partner then, I, I didn't, I wanted to know more, of course, and, you know, you told me more, but there was a big lie involved, um, and the big lie was the fact that you picked somebody that was much older than you, and I had so many questions, I didn't understand how this could happen to you. Why? Do you remember I drove down to um, your college one night just out of a whim and you and I slept in a hotel room? Yes. And I just felt like... I didn't, I didn't remember that until just now, though. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. I felt like I needed to be with you. I just had to hold you. Well, yeah. I mean, the whole thing for me was very alienating. I thought I, thought I was, like, ruining our relationship and... And I felt like obviously it, it affected you a lot too. So I, I felt for both of us, and I was um, I was scared. Obviously, you were scared. And, I was scared, but I wasn't scared the fact that you were gay. I it was, was the older. It was the, the yeah. age difference that uh, that I was so curious about, and so um, just curious about why why you would pick somebody that much older. I blamed it on the fact that your dad died. Right. You didn't have a father figure until Joe came into the picture. Gotcha. And, I mean, but still there was no hugs and love. I mean, I know that dad loves you. Joe loves you very, very much. But when, it, when it's a real dad, there's a camaraderie between a father and a son. Yeah. You know, and I kept thinking, well, that's why. Because your dad died. Because he died, right. That you picked a father figure kind of 
person. And that's just how I've always been is my type is is older looking men. And, and that's I, what I'm attracted to. And I think it took it took you a while to come around to that. And it did, it did. I was just so mad. Do you remember I took all your clothes and I threw them on his porch? <laughs> that's the story I told in my coming out story and how I was on a bus to a baseball game at that point when Don called me and it was uh I broke down on the bus right there, and it was not it was not a good time. Um, I think I went 0 for 4 in that game too with like three strikeouts. <laughs> um, looking back, I mean, I, I can laugh. We can both laugh and yeah. see how far we've come. But in the moment, it's tough. And I'm gonna be honest. Like my mom and my dad said some very terrible things to me. And I un I totally understand because that's it. That's a reaction. That's like a visceral reaction, and it may not be speaking your true words. Some people need time to come around. Um, and fortunately, like I, I offered forgiveness for what they said, and and fortunately for them, they were able to cope with it however they possibly could um, to find a way to rationalize what was going on in my life and why I was feeling this way. Um, so I wanted to know from you, like, how did you? How did you get there? How did you get around to accepting not only gay but the the this you know unique nature of the, our relationship? I can tell you this: I cried every day for two years straight. There wasn't one day that went by that I didn't cry. Right. And and blame somebody. And at that time, it was Don. It was all Don's fault. Everything was his fault. Um, and this and is why she has so much gray hair now. It's because of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a black thing on. So yeah. <laughs> but um, it was, I cried for two years. And um, I cried alone. I cried, I wore dark sunglasses a lot of times. At that time, I was driving a bus for D.B. Fisher school kids. And um, one of the girls asked me um, why my face was so wet. Oh, under gosh. my sunglasses and it was because I, I I'd see something and it would re remind me of, of my son and I would cry I, I'm a crier and that actually helped me uh, you know get over it and it's not that I needed to get over the fact that he was gay I was fine with that it was always about the age difference come to find out I love Brian <laughs> yeah. His partner now, I mean, I I think the world of him and I I can see and I understand why Jonathan would pick somebody older. He's never been a boy that likes drama. He doesn't like to be played with emotionally. So yeah, I had several girlfriends in my younger days, uh straight acting days and I think a common thing was that there was like expectations for me to text all the time and be there all the time and, and I had other things going on. Um, and now not to say that you shouldn't prioritize a relationship, but I think there was unnecessary drama for the expectations of you need to text me back within, you know, a yeah. minute or two. Yes, I and remember. So that, that, that was tough and... <laughs> I don't even know what else to say about it, but you yeah. have to explore and experiment, I guess, and and so, follow your heart, and that's 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 the hard part sometimes because it, the people around you you're afraid to hurt them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was definitely I was I was terrified. Obviously, I was crying. It was a big deal, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so I think moral of my story and from your perspective too is it doesn't always go well. But if you give it time and you let people wrestle with their feelings, mm -hmm. um, that's that's really all you can do. And and try to feel and empathize with what they're feeling. Um, and usually things turn out for the better. If if it's true love, like obviously I love you and I want you around and I and you same for me. I mean we're, we're mm -hmm. mother and family. son, so we're family. And the people who care about you most are going to come around. Um, you just got to give them some time and some space. That's what you need. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over. Love you too.